Welcome to Earth Star Talk, episode 12. Today we want to talk about all things you should not do when contacting spirit or the spirit world. We all have an inner sense of wanting to connect with the divine or wanting to connect with cross to our loved ones or wanting to connect out of curiosity with something which is up there. Well, there are certain things how not to do it. When I work as a psychic medium, I use always a protective shield around me and around my work home. I'm using a golden light bubble, which I bring in from the divine design with the golden vibration, which is a very high vibration and can function as a golden ring of fire around you. And sometimes I put a silver layer against it for reflecting things back to what does not belong into my space. Um, when people use their Ouija board or Ouija board, then um, they inadvertently open a portal. And if they do not protect themselves and the environment, through the rift in time and space, things can come in by the dozens. And then people like me have to clean it up. So my <laughs> suggestion to you is if you have a Ouija board, burn it, shred it, give it away, do not use it. If you want to see the consequences of what a Ouija board does in one's life and how demonic entities can actually impersonate somebody you love to let them in and to have a hook in your energy field, you might watch a haunting episode, um, season 10, I think it's episode eight, a vision of terror, a haunting vision of terror. There, a young lady, which is very gifted spiritually, wanted to connect with her deceased father, only that a dark, dark spirit impersonated the father. So, we need to learn to differentiate. But most people who use Ouija boards have no differentiation whatsoever. They do not know what they let themselves into. So folks, please, please, pretty please, do not use these Ouija boards, not for curiosity's sake, not for any reason. You are creating, I say it one more time, a rift in time and space where you create a portal in that board sponsored by your physical life force energy and the other counterpart. It always takes two to tangle here to open that portal. Similar in a good way when Jesus said, if two are gathered in my name, I am there. If two are gathered in the sense of connecting with something up there, whether it's curiosity or really have a good intent of meeting somebody you love, then um, it can create this portal. So please do not do this. Talking about portals, there are other things who can create portals. I had one case where a lady was um, visiting my meditation classes in Germany and she always had bad dreams and she had bad luck and she was uh, always complaining about how bad her life was. So I investigated remote viewingly uh, or psychically what was going on in her room. And so I detected something directly over her head on her bedside. Came to be that she had a shelf over her bed and on that shelf lay tarot cards. Now, not all tarot cards are bad, but this particular one is. It was created by a dark master of the arts who was a light wizard and now swooped over to the dark side. And what he created did the same way. It turned from light to dark. So we have to be cautious in what we're doing and what we intend we're putting in. And they're beautiful. The card I'm talking about, the tarot cards I'm talking about is from Alistair Crowley. The Alistair Crowley tarot cards are a no-no in my book. Why? Because they suck 
her dry of life force, they turn good things into bad things. How is that possible? Well, she had it at night directly over her head. That means when we at night loosen out of our physical body and go into dream state or use the ethereal body, we are going up. We're going out of our body and she passed right through the cards. Now, tarot cards are like gateways. Let me see where I have you on. Um, one second. No, I have no cards crossed. Anyway, um, when you have a tarot card, it's, it's like a gateway to a field of energy, what they're meaning. The creator created with creating the card, a field of energy. And that's how we can read it when we're reading tarot cards. We are picking up of the field, we're picking up um, subconsciously symbols, which are like gateways, you know, you can travel through, uh, through. And that's how a tarot reader can read the cards. Yes, they can study it by the books, but there is a lot of um, subtle information in these cards. So um, coming back to the Alistair Crowley tarot, beautiful cards with lots of color and that attracted her, beautiful, colorful cards. But uh, the intent was by Alistair Crowley to let the people serve him even in the afterlife. Even if he's already crossed over, he intended to draw power to himself wherever he was. That was his intent for creating those cards. So intention is a very, very powerful tool. So when you are buying any kind of tarot cards, hold your left hand above it and ask, are these cards and energies conducive to my well-being when I work with them, yes or no? And if she would have done this, she would have realized that it would suck energy out of her instead of giving her energy and information. It might have given her some information, but it also, again, gave her not only nightmares, but also that energy uh, suction. So again, when you are asking, ask about, is this good for the best and highest good of my well-being to buy and use these cards? If it's a no, don't even go there, don't touch them further, turn around, or walk away. In our story with this lady who had the Alistair Crowley tarot cards, she um, gave them to me and asked them, please, can you let go? And she did it very reluctantly because she was already interwoven with these cards, which she had used. And they were pretty, right? So she was very reluctant. And I said to her, either give them up or go further down the drain. It's up to you. So she gave it up. I gave her a totally different card deck, free of charge just because that she let go of that non-productive uh, energy. And I tried to burn them. They did not burn. I had them in a kettle where I burn stuff for ritualistic purposes and they didn't burn. To the contrary, these cards were so permeated with the energy of Crowley that they resisted the flames. Can you imagine? And each time I walked around them, the flames were licking and trying to jump out of the pot towards me to burn me instead of being burned. I've never had seen anything like it. So they are not easily to be burned in case you have some. I would recommend it though. So what did I do? I took some lighter fluid, very cautiously because I know it can be very dangerous and um, extinguished at first, I have to say, put then the, the flames, put the lighter fluid in them and then um, put the light, you know, with a, with the um, Streichholz in German, with a little um, match and lit it again. And then I called my best girlfriend, Paola, at the time, who I worked with a lot. And we did a certain chant over together, asked the light beings to help us to help this energy of Crowley being transformed 
into the light and take the darkness away and transform it um, while this card got burned. It took about four hours or so to burn those things. Can you imagine? Even with the light of blue, and please, this is such a call to action to use light of load on your to burn tarot cards, okay? That we understand ourselves here correctly. But it took a long time. And then at night, I had a, dreams about every single one of these cards. And they were alluring me to go through those cards, this, this vision. I had a vision of every single one of them. And Alistair Crowd spoke to me and said, you know you want the power. You know you want this. You know you want to be recognized. You know you want more information. And again, these, these cards were beautiful. So they looked to me in this uh, dream state or vision state like um, a stained glass window. Beautiful, you know, very, very tempting. But I declined politely and said, no, thank you very much. Not this way. And then uh, by the next morning, it led up and these temptations were gone and the energy was totally gone. But I will share the story with you to make you aware how ill intent can create an entanglement web, which is difficult to escape. Same with the Ouija board. When you open the doorway, they will attach themselves to you and your life will go down the drain. I'm working with some uh, friends of mine, they're investigators, and they're helping a lot of people with encounters. They call these, you know, experiencers. And some of these experiencers didn't just experience some particular beings of a particular area where energy lines cross and or goes, but they have some attachments. So this episode talking about the Ouija board and talking about Alistair Crowley tarot cards is for anybody who ever used the Ouija board and is wondering why in the world is my life going down the drain? Because you have attachments and these need to be cleared. They cannot be cleared by somebody flipping the switch and ta-da, you're clear. No, you have the responsibility to be part of the clearing process. You cannot just lay there and say, oh, let it be done for me. You have to be part because you are the one who created a, a lock or an opening for a key lock principle of attachment. So you have to participate to push that energy out of yourself. My recommendation for this would be using golden light on a daily basis. Envision a golden sun over your head. One ray of the golden sun flows through the top of your head into every single cell of your brain, eyes, nose, mouth, throat, and neck, shoulders, arms, and fingertips along the spine and muscle structure into the heart and chest opening both wide. Solar plexus to make it more radiant, whole digestive system, hips, legs, knees, calves, feet, and through the feet into the ground like roots. All old non-supportive beliefs or energies or energy attachments can be swept away into Mother Earth for recycling, while the glistening gold prevails and then send an extra flow of gold to Mother Earth, who was so kindly to recycle those energies for us and then let it overflow from the heart into your aura, your electromagnetic field, pushing everything out which is not belonging to you. Any darkness, any grayness, any dark spot, any temptation, envision it with your intent. You have seen with Alistair Crowley, intent can be a very, very powerful thing. So use your intent to push it out there, especially in the neck. Put a ball of light into your neck and uh, push anything which is not yours. Let it burn off in the golden sun in your neck and push it out of your system. And then protect yourself afterwards with a golden ring of fire. Sponsored by the divine light you are calling in with the golden sun, which is synonym of your higher self. 
okay, there are so many more things to talk about what not to do. But for today, I just wanted to give this a short interlude about no Ouija boards and no Aleister Crowley tarot cards. If you are a victim of Aleister Crowley tarot cards or Ouija boards, you can email me and we can talk about what clearing needs to be done to make your life better. But this golden light meditation is one of the things I would always recommend, plus the question of what healing frequency, what color frequency would you need to feel and be your best today and to make the stuff go away and to keep your energy crystal clean and clear. Everything in the universe is color and sound, swinging atoms, the table, the chair, your body. Everything is vibration. So we can use vibration to counterbalance anything, any hook or link, which links you to a darker energy. Of course, those who are feeding off you like piranhas, um, they will not easily give up. So you have to be steadfast in your practice and doing it every single day. Practice makes perfect and practice makes more powerful when we are using the divine light of gold. But let's say you have established a golden ring of fire around you by using the golden light meditation and then out of the heart into the aura, fill it to the brim with gold, and then you are condensing it like a golden ring of fire and you can put a certain layer of silver against it. And then you bring in the energy frequencies of color healing of the day to fill all energy holes and to fill yourself from the inside out and have this golden light bubble being filled with the frequencies of healing of the day. When you do that every single day relentlessly, you will gain the power to push these negative energy off, especially if you have their intent. The intent should not be, I fight you, I dominate you as I was dominated by you. That should not be the attitude in this. The attitude should be, I bring in the divine love. And with the di divine love, I transform this negativity. Because the darkness has its own place in this duality of the world. The darkness is ultimately only condensed light. Once we understand that the darkness just does a job in a polarity, only that we don't want to be part of that polarity anymore. And we say, we do not want to do the ping pong play between dark light, dark light we can go up and function from a higher perspective. And that's what the golden light meditation will do. And when you do it with love, I lovingly claim my space. I'm not fighting against you. I lovingly claim my space. You have no right to interfere with my free will. You have no right to interfere with my soul's path. You have no right to hold me small. You have no right to hold me hostage. Yeah, because these kind of energies try to hold you hostage in the low vibration level by creating a ping pong play. Yeah, you, they give you bad thing in life, you fight back. Then they give you something else, you go down the rain. And you're exhausting yourself like on a hamster red race or wheel, hamster wheel uh, with the dark sources. You exhaust yourself. So the key and solution is to get out of the wheel or out of the ping pong play of the lower levels i show you that i'm stronger i'm of the light i show you darkness that i'm stronger than you that's not the way to go about it the way to go about it is to go beyond and work from the top down not from the equality level of here is goodness and here is badness and we are fighting each other. The key is to come from here and acknowledge your divine power. And then you can transmute and transform that ping pong play. And no darkness then will dare to come close to you. And that's why working with the golden light is so important. So inadvertently, you're opening a gateway too, but you're opening a gateway to your divine heritage, to your divine power. You're opening a gateway to divine love with support and light. 
white is powerful too, but white is not as powerful as gold because white is more for clearing and soft and gentle transformation, but gold is more powerful coming from the highest of the divine. I want to keep this brief because I do not want to dwell too much on the negativity, but whoever dabbled with Ouija boards and has now to pay the consequences, I'm happy to invite them. I'm going to do a class on clearing, um, not too far in the future. Right now, we are having a class on how fast track for your psychic abilities and to work with this responsibly, consciously, and not just opening yourself up to something, but to do it in a very conscious manner. So if you are interested in um, participating in the next class um, at the end of October, let me know down here and email me to brilliance at claudiagranger.com or wholenessnavigation at hotmail.com, my old uh, private email, uh, or just leave a comment here and I will get back to you. That's it for today. Stay away from the dark forces. Stay in the light and acknowledge your divine heritage. Bye-bye till we see you next time.